Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Hello, hello. Hello. We are back. Yes, we <laughs> and are. Welcoming you here. And um, yeah. so I'm we're just like so thankful that you guys are listening to. It's oh, really yes, fun. Definitely. And we love I we I know we probably say it every podcast, but we love hearing feedback from you guys and um yeah, most of these topics come from that stuff. So, yeah, please keep sending that over to us. Yeah. And today we are talking about the uncertain act of making. You're probably like, what mm. does that mean? And so we're going to dig into that. Um, and we're starting off because this idea was prompted actually by a book I was reading. Surprise, I was reading another book. Surprise. Surprise. Um, and if you haven't read this, it is called Enchantment, and it's by Catherine May. Many of you may know her book, Wintering. Um, and so this is her most recent book that has come out. Um, and it's, it's again, it's re, it's just, yeah, it's really good. So here is a quote from it that I thought I would read and then we're going to chat about it. It says, I don't want to sit like a brooding hen on the nest of my past achievements. I want to keep on going deep into the uncertain act of making to see the unknown world stretch out before me and to devote myself to exploring it. And so there was something to me that jumped out when I was reading this of just like, I want to keep on going deep into the uncertain act of making. And then the idea that she says, then the unknown world is stressed out before you when you create and things like that and making and the devotion to exploring it. And I don't know why that. What, what's that? What's the, remind me of that first part of it. It even says something. I don't uh, want to sit like a brooding hen on the nest of my past achievements. Yeah, like that, that one's really key for me. So. What, what is that key for you? Yeah, I think it's just, I think, you know, we've talked about this multiple, multiple times, I think sometimes, but just that idea, like that little part at the very beginning for me is I can get so stuck into the things I've always done and the ways I've always created or um, the look that I've always felt comfortable in and just all that kind of stuff that I feel like, you know, it's really easy to be stuck in that being the brooding hen, just sitting on your nest, focusing on the things of your past. Like it's so easy to do that. And then I think a lot of times in that, because of that, then it just creates like creative block. You, you just are like, yeah, I just can't do this anymore. Um, no one's liking the things I used to do or, you know, am I just still relevant now? You know, all the, all the things, imposter syndrome, all that stuff just starts to fl flow in. Um, and so I think that idea that, you know, sitting and waiting and just expecting the things of your past to continue to do the things that they did, um, is just not a great place to stay. No. And I think too, you may have, I think when I read that part of the quote or of it too, that jumps out to me as I think of, you know, all, most of us, depending where you are, if you're very young, you probably haven't been through this yet, but you'll have an ebb and flow of your career. Mm. And so you're going to have high highs and you have low lows, or you could change careers completely, <laughs> which we have done as well. Um, and I think when that is the case, you know, I can think back to like having my photography business and there were some huge highs, some things that I was like, this is my ultimate dream. And yeah. then I actually did it. And then to look back and now and be like, oh, well, like I'm not doing photography anymore. I mean, yes, I do it for our family and things like that, but I haven't, it, it hasn't culturally, it hasn't translated here, frankly, um, besides me doing weddings, which I'm not yeah. going to go back to doing weddings. Well, I think the, your passion within photography doesn't translate here. No, and so, high school seniors so are not a thing. Potentially there could be something that comes up that, oh, I, I didn't realize, yeah, you know, I going into the second something. part of this phrase, yes. like there could be something that you discover in photography and how you're doing certain things that might actually translate really it could, well here. Possibly, yeah. I haven't discovered what But if you're sitting is. in there and yeah, saying, exactly, saying, oh, well, well that doesn't, that just doesn't do it. Yeah. Like that doesn't translate here. That doesn't, like, then I guess I'm done. Or it may be that, that, 
it also could be, and I, you know, I'm saying this in the middle of this, I don't have an answer right now. Yeah, it yeah. also could be like, that was for a season and I'm have moved on to other things now, you know? And yeah, so, true. Mm-hmm. um, I think that's also something that I think about too is, you know, it's not that I don't touch my camera anymore. It's just, I maybe am not doing it as business anymore. Yeah. Um, and that kind of thing. And so I think that idea, um, again, it's that uncertain act of making of like, you know, for instance, I did a photo shoot with our daughter for her birthday. Um, and that was something she's been begging to do and stuff like that. And she had seen a lot of my past photos and was like, oh, I want photos taken like that. Yeah. And I said, okay, great. Like, what's your idea? Let's do something. Um, and so we went out and did it. And I had an absolute blast. And she had so much fun. And it was just fun. And it got me thinking, like, oh, like, I do miss certain aspects of doing this and that kind of thing. Obviously, it's a little bit different when it's your daughter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that kind of thing. But again, it's that I'm so glad I didn't it because it wasn't, it's an uncertain act of making. Like, Veda was so excited about this but she often frankly she'll either be super cheesy for the camera for us yeah or she hides from it when we try to get a picture of her doing something and i thought i'm going into this and i don't know how the heck this is gonna go this could go really badly and it actually she i didn't pose her one time she did everything i was gonna say i moved her in the right light kind of scares me a little bit it does scare me a little bit i moved her in the right light that's all i did um but again it's that idea of yeah, it's just, it's always uncertain when you're making anything. It's uncertain. It's uncertain if you have a client that you're working with. It's uncertain if you're doing it just for yourself. Mm. It's uncertain if you're doing something you've done a thousand times, and it's uncertain if you're doing something for the first time. I mean, wouldn't you say that's right? Yeah, I mean, definitely if you're, and I guess it doesn't even have to be something, like just overall, like the act of creating, you're stepping into kind of the unknown, right? Because you don't really have def- fully understand or know what actually is going to come out in some ways, you know, even going from, you know, I'm even thinking of like, you know, when, when I was in the, you know, advertising agency business and doing that kind of stuff, like doing somebody's logo and stuff like that, you just have no idea where it's going to go and like what's going to come out and all that kind of stuff. Even if you have like references and like all that kind of stuff, you still, there, there's an act of, of the making aspect of it that is just like, you have no idea what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, it's very same with some of the illustration work that I've been doing. And, you know, I would even say just, even just, I don't know, there's every, like just making in general, like there's just, you just never know like what could come out of it. Um, and so I don't know, like, I just think it's so fun. Like I, and I, I think what's fun too is you see, our kids creating things as well and like seeing how like especially like with jude and some of his things that he's been doing lately like i don't think he really has a plan i think he just starts cutting things up or he starts to <laughs> roll 100 yes, yeah, that's what he does like he starts to roll stuff house. out on our kitchen table and he's like sculpting something and then all of a sudden it's like this little like monster that has like thousands of teeth and like all the stuff and i'm like where did that even come from like, but I don't think he sat down thinking I'm going to like create this thing. Like, he j- it just happens, and like I it's so cool. I stepped on one of those teeth, teeth by the, the way the oh, other day. Oh, that's not fun. <laughs> Good, it fell out of the um, guy. I think. And but I think too. I think even thinking about that with Jude, like he doesn't sit there and go, "Oh, I'm going to continue to to sit and like hope that I create the same thing I did last time." Like I think he just enjoys the process, and he enjoys like what, obviously he's he has moments where he like hates what he did and like he like rips it up or throws it away or smashes it and starts all over. I think that's all of us. Right. But the, the, the big part of it is he gets, he gets back into it and, and continues to create and sees what happens and all that kind of stuff. So. And I think I, I touch on, cause I feel like we touch on this, but, and I always want to be careful when we're talking about creativity because some of you are going to write it off right away and say, I'm not creative. Mm. Um, and, I sorry yeah. if you are so sick of us saying this, but that's not true. Every single yeah. person is creative in their own way. And so whatever that thing is that, you know, that that is you and that is um, like, like even even down to like creating systems in your family or exactly. whatever, like that's being creative. Like mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. It's just it, like anything yeah. that you're doing. And in all of it, there's never a guarantee in anything. You could be following a recipe, and this has <laughs> happened to me before, that you have made 1,000 times. I mean, I made tried to make this bunt cake for... <laughs> 
the coronation and I had made this certain recipe all several times. I went through two different cakes and I did smash it the second time. I got really yep. mad. And I you didn't put- smash it. You just like you just grabbed it and like squeezed it. And it just went like <laughs> Through your fingertips and like Pat turned around, I was like, stuff. "What is going on?" I'm like, "I'm so mad!" And it just I was like, "Well, but it's still gonna taste fine. Like, can we st- have a little bit of oh, that?" Oh yeah, Zane ate like the rubbish of it. The and Zane was like, "What is going on?" I was like, "Sometimes you just get mad and you just need to smash something." And this is a safe way to let out your anger on a cake that has gone wrong. Um, that yeah, well, I don't know and what I ended up making for that so day. Funny. I ended up making homemade donuts or something like that. But all that to say, like, you can make a recipe you've made a thousand times and maybe i should say this maybe bakers instead of doers as a profession it comes out the right way every single time i have not perfected that there's still an uncertain certain uncertainty in it and that's mm-hmm. scary and so i think what that means is for those of you that want to dip your toe into any kind of creativity i don't care what it is it could be putting a new paint color on your wall of your house mm-hmm. like whatever it may be that there's an uncertain to it is uncertainness a word I'm making it up if it is that and stops yeah. most of us it stops most of us from even <clears throat> trying yeah um and that kind of thing and so yeah. yes you know trying sometimes you're going to fail sometimes you're going to smash the cake up and that's okay but i think it's the idea of just it's, it's trying it's it's not holding back because you number one are comparing yourself to whatever the past thing was that you did Um, and you're taking into, and then there's a deep, you know, like Catherine May says, there's a deepness in it too, that you get to know yourself better as you're stepping into those or uncertain act of making, because you are learning more about yourself in it. Yeah. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, yeah. The idea of like chipping away at, you know, yourself in a sense to, to get down to the core center of like, and understanding you yourself even more, um, in a deeper level. Like you know what I'm exactly bring up you when you say. say that, right? Don't you? I don't know. Okay. Um, you have to tell me the, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what, what are they about. called? The prisoners. The prisoners. Yeah. So if you ever have the chance to go to Florence, which, Oh my gosh, you should, I want to go back. I yeah. just want to go back and eat a ton, but it is <clears> filled <throat> with art as well. Um, yeah. and when you go to see David, David, why did I want to say Adam for some reason? I got confused for a second. Um, when you go to see David, he is like, there's a, it's a hole kind of, it's not that, it's not that big, but, it's a hall mm-hmm. and David's at the end of it in this big like domed room. And then on the way to him are these prisoners that are sculpted. Is it marble or stone? Yeah, it's or... in marble and they're basically just unfinished. Yeah, they're unfinished. So it could be an arm coming out of it or I don't know, a leg or something like that, but it's unfinished. But then here's David at the end that is finished and it's just yeah. such a, we've always used it in our family. And I know Pat's always like, that was for your 40th well, birthday. We went to see it's him. Just, it's just so cool. Like just the, that idea of like, in a lot of ways, I think if we get, if we get stuck in those places and we don't feel comfortable enough to give things a go and try things and all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> we're kind of like stuck. We're like stuck in that marble like you you're half kind of sculpted you're not fully sculpted um and unless you're giving things a go and you're trying new things and you're um stepping into uncomfortable situations right um to understand more about yourself on a deeper level and things like that and when you do that obviously more of the marble more of the sculpture gets revealed right and the sculpture is you um, and so that's why I love that those pieces of artwork so much. Like it, there's just something beautiful about that and seeing those next to David, which is, you know, in a lot of ways, like a lot of people say, it's like, obviously like so perfect and so well-made and crafted and all that stuff. Um, and before you get there, you get, you see these things that are just either not done or you know, at that, at some point he was like, this isn't good enough or whatever. And he just kept on going. And he, in in a lot of ways it is like, you know, the idea that, you know, there, there were multiple versions of David before you finally get to him. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, there's just something beautiful about it. It's just really, really cool. I absolutely love it. I some, I, I can equate it to traveling too, of the idea of like, whenever you go on a holiday or vacation, or that kind of thing, there's uncertainty in it. You can plan all you possibly want and there's going to be something in that plan that doesn't go right. And so like, there's the same thing as when you're stepping into, you know, making of any kind of thing. There's, you know, it's, it's going to go awry at some point. 
Sure. And that's okay. And that's why there's so much beauty in that. And I just, yeah, I, I see so many of our friends talk about like, oh, well, I used to do this or I used to do that. And we'll often ask them, well, why don't, why don't you do that anymore? Yeah. And maybe they had, they had, and I get it. Sometimes you have really hard experiences and things. And so you need to let that rest for a little bit to heal from that and that kind of thing. Um, but then there's a time to step back into it as well. Um, or step into something that looks a little bit different and that kind of thing of, um, Mm -hmm. of not holding back because of it being uncertain or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think think too, I think, I think about, I think about as well, the idea that as, as you continue to push into something like, there might be a breakthrough in there, if that makes mm-hmm. any sense. Like if you just think about if you're like working on something and doing something and you stop right before you finish the project or whatever it is, like nothing, nothing, I don't know. You don't, again, you don't learn. You don't, you don't understand. You don't work through some of the successes and failures and that kind of thing unless you see things through. Um, and yeah, so I just think that's so important, like the idea of like continuing to push through stuff and um, yeah. Yeah, I remember, um, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna equate this to sports here for a second, Uh-oh. but I remember having a conversation once with somebody that I got to be in a conversation with that um, was a really well-known sports person. And they, um, and this is when I was pretty young too, and they said this to me, they were like, you're, you're seeing me now, but once you're past like whatever age, I'm not gonna be doing this anymore. Mm. And so I have to think of like, yes, this was my chance to have this like, you know, here, this will be my past. And Mm. you will either not see me doing anything related to this or I will have to pick a different career because with sports, you know, physically, (laughs) it's not something they can do at their top game forever. You know, sure, there are plenty of people that do it for a very long time and they may still do it later in life, but maybe not professionally. And it was just uh, this had me thinking about that, too, of like we think of. Oh, so many things that there may be seasons of things It may be your season for the height of your career and then it looks different. Or it may be the season for the height of your career hasn't come yet. Like, I think we've had so many examples right now of people that are, you know, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, that like they've started a business, they've won their first Oscar, they've, you know, all won their first Tony or anything like that, that it's like it, it, and I'm, I know I'm using big examples there. Sure. Um, or it may be like you have this prolific writer that you assume, I had this happen recently. I was reading a book and I assume she started in her 20s because she's written so many books and she started when she was 45. Yeah. Um, and she's only, I think she's like 70 or 80 now, or I was listening to podcasts with her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had no clue she started when she was 45. That's a lot of books. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't even start until she was 45. And so I think that is another thing with this is like, there's no such thing as an age limit on it. Sure, there may be certain things. Yes, like I just said, is the sports example um, it, for professional well, yeah. sports or but something like that. Like a lot of times, but, you know, some of the, I mean, with, with sports, like if you, if you want to go down that trail, like they just, they think of things differently and mm-hmm. they use their experience and their knowledge and whether it's coaching or creating like uh, a business that helps athletes or, you know, like there's, there's so many things that then they use that experience and use that knowledge of quote unquote, when they were in their prime of that stuff to like then push into something new. Right. Mm -hmm. But if they would just sit there and do nothing, like who knows what, you know, they missed out on or whatever. So. Exactly. I think it's, it's, um, yeah. So I, I just had that thought pop up and I wanted to make sure I said that this isn't an age thing at all it's for all of us so yeah we'd love to hear from you guys on this um i highly recommend this book if you haven't read it yet i also recommend wintering so it's enchantment by Catherine may if you haven't read wintering you can wear it, you can read it in the middle of the summer it does not have to be winter to read it because it's all about going through different like wintering seasons and the enchantment is about reawaking the wonder and exhausted age and so um, and she actually did um, talks a lot about like just the time of COVID and stuff like that too. So it's super relatable, super timely. Um, yeah, but we'd love to hear from you guys. What holds you back from making things? What holds you back from trying new things? That kind of stuff. Um, because I, if we just, it, it's so good to hear from you guys because we realize we know we're not alone in a lot of this thinking. Um, Definitely. But it also helps us relate other stories that might be relatable to others and help them in this as well. But go, go make something. Go. Yeah. Go create. <laughs> step into go something, something. Whatever it may be. Do something uncomfortable today. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Our uncomfortable thing may just be figuring out how to sit in our house without it yeah. being hot. But. <laughs> Well, all that to say, we are so thankful for you guys listening, and we will talk to you next time. See ya.
Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review, which helps others find our podcast. Continue the conversation with us over on Instagram at Laurent Collective. We look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.